You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. From the studies of traditional and alternative methods in martial arts, natural sciences, to further his knowledge of the holistic sciences, author Dr. Paul is here to help promote clarity and understanding and to help facilitate making informed decisions. You learn to trust yourself, opening you up to a new world of connection, relationships, and care. So please welcome the host of Bridges, Dr. Paul Dyer. Hey, welcome to another show at Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and welcome to the BBM Global Network. You know, if you're listening now, you know you can catch us here every Monday at 8 p.m. And welcome to the show. We got people coming in and listening from all over the country. And thank you for your emails and texts, the ones who reach out and, and touch me a little bit. Of course, as you know, if you've never been to the show or ever heard the show, I always associate the show with a bridge. And today is the Longfellow Bridge. And the Longfellow Bridge is in Boston. And then with that bridge is always associated with the human rights. Human rights is something that we should all be fighting for and all should know that we have. And today's human rights is the right. You have rights no matter where you are. It's human rights number six on the charter. So we have a guest that's already on the line. And I'm so excited to have Mr. Dale Weston on the line with us because well, you'll you'll end up falling in love with Dale just like I have fallen in love with Dale. So Dale, come on in. Hey, Welcome thank you very Bridges. much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. You know, um, you, normally I have like maybe two guests that come on, but you you have such an impact on so many things you do. You're actually going to take over the whole show, and that's going to be awesome because people get to shine the you get to shine light on people where they are, and especially with. The Bridges today, on Monday, we have the Winter Solstice coming up that's on this Friday. And that is the that is the change between our light to dark or our dark to light. And so you're going to shed light on some of the things that you've been doing, Dale. And that's in the, the movie. You, you're a writer. You're a producer. You're an actor. I mean – you just you do it all, and is that the, is that the case of the of the movie industry? You just have to do it all. You just start to do it all. No, I'm just greedy. I'm extremely, <laughs> I'm extremely greedy, and you know those needy people. Anybody in the industry is needy. I've discovered that, including myself. And if we're honest about it, you want to be seen, you want to be heard. It's a soapbox industry. And that's why so many ridiculous actors have opinions about things that they don't study. (laughs) And so I've decided for myself, I want to be a part of everything because I feel like I have the creative energy and the, and the passion to share a lot of great things with a lot of great people. And and I've been very fortunate over the last 15, 20 years to have some incredible experiences that are worth sharing. So that's basically the truth. That's what it is. So um, I was able to go out to Vegas and do a seminar for Dale on his um, Action on Film Festival. And it's a huge film festival. And I know you host it every year, but you do a lot of film festivals. Now let's get into, one, let's tell people about who you are, what do you, what you do, and where they can get a hold of you. Because it's a lot, especially if you're a writer, if you have movies, if you're a screenplay writer. So I'm sure people want to know that. Okay, well, I'll give you the quick uh, wrap. When I was in college, I met a man named Mr. Miller. He was a very wealthy man, and I was in his home for a Christmas party. And uh, his wife uh, screamed when I sat in a particular chair, and so I stood up very anxious. And um, 
uh, he said, come on up with me and come to my office. So as I was going up to his office, on these stairs that were in a rotunda, I kept seeing these Rembrandt paintings, and Rembrandt's my favorite artist. So I'm looking at a bunch of reproductions that I go up to his office, which is a round circular office on the third floor of his home. And I noticed there's a Rembrandt on every wall. And I said, those are nice reproductions. And he said, those aren't reproductions, young man. And I said, can you answer a question for me? He said, sure. I said, how do you make it? What do you do to be successful? He says, well, I'll give you the short answer. Create a library or a portfolio of something. I don't care what it is, parking lots, mm. hotels, businesses, cars, whatever it is. I want you to build a portfolio of those things. Well, I was only 21 years old at the time. And uh, it ended up that um, I could create uh, movies very cheaply and very easily. And so I started creating martial arts tapes. Mm -hmm. And the first one was called The Top Ten Techniques Every Martial Artist Should Know. And I shot them on these horrible VHS cameras, but I uh, was selling them like crazy. I couldn't understand the success of it. It was really something strange and foreign to me. That something I could create would have that kind of an impact on people. And I, I called now, Michael now, Squally, before you move oh, on, be hey, Dale, before you move on, I just – I'm so giddy because you got the chance to train with Mr. Ed Parker, who was the creator oh, of American yeah. Kempo and, 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 and I just think that's amazing because I, I'm not – I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him. I was, I'm, I'm like third generation. So, um, but yeah, I just, but keep going on. I just want to let people know that, you know, you actually got to touch the man. Well, I'll tell you, he actually touched me and in a bunch of different ways. Cause I was always a go getter after I met Mr. Miller, you know, I decided to do a bunch of different things as an entrepreneur. And what I discovered was is that Mr. Parker had been robbed a number of times. I mean, really just robbed. And he was one of the most powerful men. And I'm a big boy, but he's, he was probably one of the most powerful men I ever met. And I don't just mean physically. I mean that he understood the human body, physiology, had a great understanding of, of what we were and how we functioned. And mm -hmm. I went to a seminar one day, and he was standing there. He was looking at me. He says, oh, you doubt me. And I said, yes, I do. Now, you got to remember, I had more mouth. <laughs> uh, then, then rear in to cash a check with. And uh, he said, um, um, okay, great. So he's about 40 people in the seminar, and he walks by a minute later, he touches me on my right, uh, uh, by my ear, my right jaw. And I felt my body on the right side start to slump. So within the first two minutes, I just felt a little numbness and tingling. Six minutes in, I couldn't move my entire right side, and I was still standing there. I was just stuck with my right side dead and my left side able to move and I got very fearful. So he let me stand like that for about 35 minutes while he taught the seminar. And it was all talking at that point. So I just stood there. I was, I mean, I didn't want to cry, but I was very frightened of what he'd done to me. So after about 35 minutes, he walks by and says, never doubt me again. And he touched me on the left side and um, everything came back. And at that point, we had somewhat of a relationship and I'll, I'll tell you, it ended for me about three weeks before his death because he was trying to raise money for a series of books and a possible film about his life. And for some reason, the last three, three meetings he had, he asked me to drive, which I don't understand because we weren't that close. I mean, I'd see him and I, you know, give him praise and bow and he'd show me something, but we really weren't that close, but he always had a, a kind word. So, um, a bit before he died, we went to a meeting in Orange County to meet with a guy named Joe Koffenberg. And I'll tell you, this story taught me a lot about Ed Parker, about humanity, and about people. Now, Joe Koffenberg was probably about 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. He was known as the T-shirt king of, of, of Orange County, and he'd made millions. So Mr. Parker and I sat down. Frank Trejo was there, and there's another guy. I forget. I think his name is Frank Morales. I believe he worked for a tortilla company or something. So and we I, had this proposal. I've trained with Frank Trejo. Yeah, yeah well, Frank was my master. I, I trained, trained with Frank. Frank Trejo. Yeah. 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 Frank was. I was with Frank for almost 22 years. Yeah. We're gonna get ready to take and, a break, Dale. Hold on. We're gonna take yeah. a break before you finish the story. Take your time. At, 
And then okay. we're going to come back and I'll shed some light on what Mr. Parker did to Dale. But before we come back, I was letting you know you listen to Bridges. And I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and we got Mr. Dale Weston on the line. You can always give us a call here at 877-475-8570 if you want to ask a question or just chime in on something you want to hear. We'll be right back. You listen to Bridges. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and we're talking with Mr. Dale Weston. And just to let you know, you're listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. And remember, the bridge is the Longfellow Bridge. And the reason why I picked the Longfellow Bridge is because two things. It's about this change of life. And the change of life happens to be now... I love to write. I've always been a writer. I love to read. I'm a ferocious reader. But one of my poems and one of my poets is Harry Walsworth Longfellow. Yeah, see the connection of why I picked the Longfellow Bridge? And one of his poems is called The Psalms of Life. And I'm not going to read, but I'll read a short clip of the poem. Life is real. Life is earnest. And it's grave and it's not a go. Thus thou art. Dust returnus was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment, not sorrow, it's our destined end of way, but to act that each tomorrow finds us further than today. And the reason that's a, such a beautiful poem to me because of the winter solstice. Remember, we're going from dark to light. And this poem resounds that life is so important and so beautiful. So that's my connection to why the bridge. I always have a connection to the reason why the bridge is, especially when I'm prepping for my show. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Dale, what would you think of the poem? I love the poem. I love the poem. It's very, when you talk about the bridge and the sadness of the bridge, that's something that really gets to me because so much of life is bittersweet. So much yeah. of life is just, is, um, is so bittersweet. And you have to accept and appreciate those times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I do. Because that's we all, important time. we, we need that. We need that brotherhood. We need that togetherness, and we need to be better at it. And 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 I know you've been doing that in your life, and I just want to tell your wife, I hope she's listening, that I just think you and your family are just the most amazing family. So thank you so much for all what you've done for me. <laughs> That's so great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That's very kind of you. So you were talking very about... Fine. 
Um, so Ed Parker, when he touched you, people what they were probably wondering about is what did that do when he touched them? So when in martial sciences, we know the body um, uh, physiological and there's a kinesiology to it. And there's a connection to all your nerves and your tendons and muscles. And there's ways that we train and in the art. And it's not just comes from the beginning of the art. This comes from a long traveling study that if you touch people a certain way, you can you could disable them. You, we can heal them as much as we can hurt them. And that's the one thing. And he didn't hurt Mr. Dale. He was just disabling him. So that is what he was did uh, when he touched him on that side of the body. But can I tell you this to finish the story, Mr. Dale? So a few weeks later, he was raising money. So we go to see Joe Coffinberg. And there's four of us there, Frank, um, Frank, uh, Mr. Parker, and myself. And I'm just kind of laying back because I was studying. And what happened was Frank had told Mr. Parker that I should be there because I, I write programs for people, for business and for business plans. And I was already writing them back at that age and putting together art and, and beautiful presentations, which is part of what I do now for films, uh, for lookbooks and EPKs. So I was there for that purpose. So I noticed that Koffenberg, who was a very small man, had a piece of paper on his desk that he balled up and his desk was huge. So we're sitting in front of the desk and he keeps pushing a little piece of paper toward the edge of the desk where we were. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cluing in, but I see what he's doing and I don't like it. And he keeps going. Um, he keeps going and um, it ends up with him knocking the paper on the ground in front of Mr. Parker what is he doing? And Mr. Parker got up, went down to one knee and picked up the paper form and put it on the desk. Now he put it on the floor purposely. He didn't mean, it wasn't a mistake. He was trying to do it. So Mr. Parker got on one knee and picked it up and put it down and sat back down. At the point that Mr. Parker sat down, he says, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm out of the deal. And I sat there and I said, this little tiny person needed to see a big man go down on his knees before he wow. turns him down. Wow. And it was one of the most reprehensible things I had ever seen. I had never seen anything in business that bad that this little tiny person, this, 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 this flea on the rear end of a rabbit dog would do that to a man like Mr. Parker only to make himself feel bigger. And I think at that point, I really began to understand human behavior. I, I, was, I was so moved by that and not in a positive way that I went out and began reading every book I could on human behavior, everything from Desmond Morris to yes. Carnegie to everyone. I mean, I read every Robert, Tony Robbins. I, I mean, I, I, everything I could do, I wanted to understand humanity better. And that was what led to that. And Mr. Parker looked back and he had, he had no look because you got to remember Parker was taught by Jimmy wing Woo, and yes. Mrs. Parker didn't like the way that Jimmy wing Woo smelled. And so she said, he's got to go. So Mr. Wing Woo got a, uh, a monkey and put it in a school and used to call the monkey Ed. So you see all these returns of things that somebody had done come back to bite him in the rear later on. So I think it was kind of a pride that Mr. Parker let Wing Wu go. And then at the end, um, uh, this Koffenberg was kind of a comeuppance in a way. But Mr. Parker had so much power. He did not, he did not show emotion. He did not show shame. He showed nothing. It was like, it, it was as if to me, that someone had thrown a, a molecule into the room and nothing more had happened. While, while I was angry, and I believe Frank was incensed um, to see that happen to a man that we knew was fantastic and great by this little flea, it really, it really showed me something about how people feel about the world, about themselves, and then therefore about others. And I said, I will never be that small in my life, ever. You know, that's a great lesson for people to learn because, you, you know, we all get treated in so many different ways in our lives about whatever avenue we're in that someone is not going to – they're going to just either try to discredit us or discount us. And even worse, they ignore us. And we have to be – 
it's like it's 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 easy to say say let's be positive let's be let's look at the light of side of things right let's look at the light outside of dark but we have that takes practice and in that practice and i think that's what ed parker had done for his whole life is that he he did that practice a practice that i have followed for over 40 years now and we're going to continue to talk about looking on the the better side of things when we come back from this break. You listen to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. You listen to Mr. Dale Weston, who's calling from Vegas, and I'd like to thank him from the show. And we'll be right back. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And remember, today's show is the Longfellow Bridge. The long, and in today's show, Human Rights, is also you have the rights no matter where you are. Remember, the winter solstice is coming. And the reason why I, I'm so excited to have Mr. Dale Weston on is because we're talking about He's going to continue to talk, but the winter solstice has a lot of significance in the, in our world, right? It's the longest day of darkness before we change over to the light. And we got to remember, in our life, you're going to go through a long, dark day or a long, dark night. And you got to remember, if you keep your heart, you keep your prayers, you, you keep understanding, you keep that practice I talk about all the time. Keep that living practice. The light will soon come. So thank you for listening to Bridges. But Dale, so in that moment when Mr. Parker got back in the car, what what transpired then? And then you can move on to your next thing. But what was something that he said? Nothing happened. You got to remember. See, this this was three or four weeks before his death. He knew he was going to die. Everybody says he wanted to go see his mother for the last time. I am one hundred percent convinced that he knew he was dying, and he said that I have to get this set up for my kids. I have to get this set up for my daughters. He was always concerned for his daughters. I don't think Ed Parker Jr. played a big role in that. I know him very well, but um, I think it was for his daughters and his daughters only and their legacy. He wanted to see his wife set up and the daughters. And the wife and I didn't get along. Uh, there was a martial artist named Tommy Chavez, which is a funny story. I trained with him a little bit. And she, I was going to tape the, the internationals one year and tape the kids, which I've been doing for years, and then sell the parents the videos and, and have records of what was going on. Because I'd already been doing the kickboxing matches with Danny Magic Lopez as a color commentator. So this is one more thing I wanted to add. And so Tommy Chavez told her, don't trust Del West. And I thought that was the funniest thing. So He's, he, he, I knew him, but he didn't say it to me. He said it to her. So it was really amusing to me that I said, okay, well, we won't do it. Thank you. Have a great day. And uh, uh, I saw Tommy a while later, and he was having to buy patches for Mrs. Parker, but she refused to give him a discount. And I laughed so hard. that I, I go, this is what you get when you bat, backbite people. This is yes, what you yep. get when you, when, you, when you go behind someone's back. So 
two years later, I was tapped to run the Battle of Los Angeles for Hossein Balatunza Day, one of the biggest tournaments LA's ever seen. And during the evening, Mrs. Parker, along with 20 other luminaries, were invited. And so as I stood on the stage, um, because she didn't speak to me before the dinner, but as we're on the stage, I said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, everyone says that Ed Parker's dead, but I think they're wrong. And everybody's like, what, 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 what's like 400 people in the room? I said, he's sitting right there to miss, next to Mrs. Parker. I see him clearly. Mrs. Parker, he's saying he loves you. And the room went nuts, and she sat there crying. So at the end of the night, her son, Nalo, came up and said, she wants to speak to you. I said, no, thank you. I'll pass. I don't want to offend Tommy Chavez. And I didn't want to be – I wasn't trying to be rude, but, you know, I have an ego, too, and I have feelings, too. I don't want to be shopping. Right, right. And so he said – I said, I'm going to pass, but thank you very much. And so – um, he came back in and said, listen, it would really mean a lot, Dell. She's older. Please just stop by and say. So I sat down next to her and took her hand, and she said, I want to apologize. I was wrong about you. I said, no problem, Mrs. Parker. It's fine. Because I don't hold grudges. I've never held grudges a day in my life. I just It's a waste of energy. But I did want her to know that her husband was there with her. He was there with us. He's in all of our spirits. And I don't care who you are, whether you are Tino Tilawasanga, the king of Samoa who created – Lee Malama, along with Richard Rabago, yes. or if you were uh, uh, any of the other guys who I was working with. See, I threw Tino's tournaments too, with Adele and his son. And it was just one of those things where people came through me to do projects, do work, uh, create posters or lithographs or serographs of them, and, and they would always sell out. I, I did so many lithographs of these people that it was disgusting. I even did these insane belt uh, uh, certificates for uh, – uh, guys like Larry Tatum, you know, who wanted this really spectacular art. And that was just my craft. So I got to be around everybody and I saw everything and all of it wasn't pretty. I'll say that. But you were going to learn. You know, you would you would know one. Some of the people that if they're listening to the show and they're not martial artists, they, they could go back and, and go research some of these names. These are some epic people that that really turned our lives different as a martial artist as myself because most people will know this name is Bruce Lee. That Parker is the one who brought Bruce Lee over to the United States and hosted him in his house. Yeah, but see, nobody wants so to talk you about have any- you know, and, and Ed, Yeah, well, Ed Parker's was famous for one thing. If you, if nothing else, it was famous for Thursday night fights. Okay. And right. on Thursday nights, anybody from any school could come fight us at Ed Parker. And so, and that was on uh Hill street in Pasadena. I'm not Hill street. Yeah. No, um, a Walnut street in Pasadena, California. And, um, Bruce Lee used to fight there, but he'd fight against grandmaster Mike Pick. And I asked Mr. Pig, how was it? How did it go? He goes, I just slap him around once in a while. Big deal. And I thought that was the funniest thing because Bruce Lee was amazing and fantastic, a groundbreaker, a creator of worlds. He 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 was also broke down race because it, people, including Mr. Parker, would not teach blacks. A lot of people don't understand that about the martial arts. First, it was yeah. Chinese would not teach non non Chinese. They wouldn't teach whites. And then when the white barrier came down. Um, they wouldn't teach black. And so Steve Saunder, Saunders went to Ed Parker, and they finally got it through, but, but Mr. Parker was a, was a great um, uh, Mormon, and they didn't believe in that mixing. So Steve Saunders broke that mold along with a guy named James Ebrow. A lot of people don't know him, but he was actually Parker's first black belt, Sifu James Ebrow. And he and I would later, later travel together selling a system I helped him create all over the country. And he would go internationally as well. But a lot of people don't know this stuff. And for the non-martial artists, what I would suggest to you is you look up a guy named Tino Tilawasanga. He was actually the heir to the Samoan throne back in the 50s. Mm-hmm. He left uh, Samoa, came to America because he wanted to be a soldier. He fought in the war. And then his hands and his speed and his power was so insane that it became an art known as Lima Lama. Now, another guy named uh, uh, takes uh, credit for it, and he's bitter towards me because he says, that was me. You should, that, you should have been promoting Tino. I'm the guy. And I go, listen, brother, I don't fight. You know, I don't, I don't get involved in this stuff. I, I go from my knowledge, just like Bruce Lee said, what's important, take with you. What's not, you know, discard by the way, the wayside. 
So I'd met all these people and I was always big and strong enough to defend myself. So I didn't take too much garbage off of people, but it was out there because ego reigns. And Tina was one of the greats. James DeBrow, um, you got to look him up, I-B-R-A-O. He was the first black belt that Ed Parker had because Parker didn't do jumping kicks. And the brow, who was a, a smaller Hawaiian man, dark complected, could do six foot uh, jumps. He actually played on the Harlem Globetrotters team, believe it or not. Wow. He was wow. only like 5'8, like but he could dunk. I mean, the guy was amazing. <laughs> but people don't wow. know that. I, I tell you, the, the time is going by so fast. I am just, you know, engulfed yeah, and listening, and I'm so excited. But um, we're going to really take another break here on Bridges, and we'll come right back with Mr. Dale Weston, and you're listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Remember, you can catch the, the podcast. comes out on iHeart's and iTunes Radio around Thursday, and you can pick up any part of the show you, you want to miss and replay it back. So continue listening to Bridges. We'll be right back with Mr. Dale Weston. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki Energy Healing, or Hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 209-326-1380. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Remember, it's today is about the Longfellow Bridge. And also, the human rights is human rights number six. You have the rights no matter where you go. No matter where you go in this world, there's always you have the right to so many things. But it's the right to life. Remember, your life is very important, and it does shed light on other things. You can be that light in the darkness no matter what. Remember the winter solstice coming out, and then take that energy that's going to be changing from the dark, longest, longest night time, longest day of night, into this new light. We're talking to Mr. Dale Weston. Mr. Dale Weston's um, anthology goes a long way, being a writer, producer, screen, screenwriter, um, martial artist, actor, um, a wonderful husband, and a good friend. And Dale, thank you for coming on the bridges with me and sharing some of the stories. And a lot of people who aren't martial artists probably don't have that connection with it. But again, it's those stories about people who are making changes in the world, doing things to make things better, and still progressing and moving forward. So you, along with the other things you are doing, you got movies coming out and also things that you are doing. What's your next project? Uh, we're releasing three films this early this year. One is uh, Sonny and Ray Ray starring Harry Lennox and uh, Nick Bancuso along with the great Carmen Argenziano and Bobby Eakes. The second film coming out is a martial arts film called The Victims. And then uh, the, the next one, which is coming out, I believe, in February, March, is called Trick. And that's kind of a story of a, they, they've taken about 20 stories from my life uh, history uh, and turned it into a feature film. 
uh, and you can see it on YouTube. It's a trick by Stan Harrington. There's a trailer up there for that. And then, of course, the Action on Film Festival comes around this July. That's actiononfilmfest.com, actiononfilmfest.com. And not enough people know that I actually write books on iTunes authors, and I do the top 100 indie filmmakers, the top 100 indie writers in the world, and we're releasing the top 100 indie performances in the world this uh, coming 2019. So all that stuff is available and out there. Just type my name, a lot of will pop pop up, along with a lot of criticisms from my ex-wives. So don't don't listen to that stuff. <laughs> So if someone wanted to help, if someone wanted to send you a script, how would they just get a hold of it? Would they just go into Action on Film Festival to, and find yeah, you through the website, there? Yeah, Action on Film Fest. Yeah, we have a huge script division. And we're also doing a new event called The Next Martial Arts Star. The Next Martial Arts Star. And that is where we are taking filmmakers from AOF, and they're submitting their reels. And we're going to choose all the stars from the film uh, from those reels. And I had a chance... Uh, the other night when I was with Dr. Goldman at his annual party here in Vegas to meet a young 15-year-old uh, phenom. She's a wonderful girl from Russia, and she's won everything you can win there. I mean, world champion. Her name is Anastasia. Yeah, she was and, just tra- uh, she was just training with um, um, Sifu Kwok. Yeah, she was with Sifu Kwok, but she was also here in Vegas uh, training with the great heir uh, at his uh, – um, his uh, Muay Thai school here in, in Las Vegas. He said he was so impressed he wanted to get something going with her. And I said, well, why not? So Dr. Goldman said, hey, Dell, um, since you make movies, I want you to meet her. And she was so overjoyed. She just ran and hugged me and cried. I said, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, don't, don't cry at a party standing next to me. You can't, you can't, people who start thinking things. So she cleaned herself up, but she speaks four languages for uh, ability and her intelligence and her insight was overwhelming for that of a 15 year old uh, person. I was very impressed. I got a chance to meet her father who doesn't speak much English because he's from Russia, but she made up for everything. So I'm going to kind of take her under my wing a little bit, do a few things with her and hopefully we can get her a launch somewhere. So if you're looking for a star for your next That's film, a- this young girl, this, Oh, I got her. She's amazing. I um um Sifu Kwok had put out a little short film about him when he was working with it, and you know Sifu Kwok is just yeah. an amazing man. I love being around him, Absolutely. and he says, yeah. "Man, this girl's got some." She says she's got some balance on her. It's really amazing. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I, there, I want you to tell tell a story to the audience here on Bridges, and this is a great story, if, especially you Rocky fans out there. I don't know if you have any Rocky fans out there, but um, we were all talking around. It was me, Dale, and Ray Mercer. Ray Mercer is an ex-boxing uh, 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 champion, and you told the story about the Rocky movie when Tommy um, Tommy Mercer was – when you, you were okay. part of that little script, and they were looking – they were looking well, for someone here's, here's to go in the ring with Tommy. <laughs> this is a, this came actually from a very early lesson. And what happened was someone told me, you know, when you see a shot, take it. Don't ever let yourself not take that shot. And um, I got a call that they were having auditions for Rocky Five over at the Jet Center. It been near your Kitas' place. And so I went in. I had no manager, no agent, no nobody. But I went in. Probably 1,500 guys there. So I walked right to the front, and the guy says, who are you with? And I, I didn't know what to say, so I saw a sign on the wall that said, the Goosens. So I said, I'm with the Goosens. They said, oh, sorry, sorry, sir, sorry. I said, yeah. <laughs> now I'm making the whole thing up. I'm just trying to get in to get the audition. So they let me in, and I said, who's the casting director? And they said, it's Caro Jones. And I walked right over to her. I said, hi, I'm Dale Weston, and I'm going to be in your movie. And she says, really? I said, yes. Yeah. So she said, take off your shirt. Do a few moves. Let me see you you, you, you uh, uh, shuffle a bit. And I said, yes. Yeah. So I did all that. She goes, come over here. I'm going to give you some lines. Let's see him over here with this guy. So she came over and watched us do the lines. And she says, okay. So that led to six more auditions and finally meeting Stallone. And then I was picked. And so now you've got all these guys going into uh, Rocky Five. Todd Champion, Steve Santuso, myself, uh, um, a really great um, – boxer named Stan, um, I think it's Stan Long, who had, hadn't been seen in a while. Stan Ward, I'm sorry, Stan Ward. So halfway through the film, they decided they want the, the fighters to take real shots from Tommy Morrison. 
<laughs> there was eight of us who were going to get hit. Now we had to just stand there in our hands in position. Then they were going to put six cameras around us, little blood in our mouth. And then he was going to punch us as hard as he wanted to. So the first guy who got in the ring was Todd Champion. Beautiful man, six foot seven, 335 pounds. Looked like a demigod of some sort. Well, Striking Dale, you're there. no small More guy. Than... <laughs> no, but Tommy was bigger. I'm telling you. So Todd Champion was bigger. So he got in the ring and Tommy Morrison crushed his face from the ear socket down to the jaw when he hit him. Okay. Oh my God. So, I mean, crushed it, broken. I mean, this beautiful face gone. So the second guy who got in the ring was Steve Santuso. He hit Steve so hard that Steve's jaw separated. And he thought he was missing a tooth. I said, no, your jaw's broken and it's split apart in pieces. So I'm third, I'm third in the ring. And um, I say to Morris, if you hit me like that, I'm going to break your legs. Just be clear about that. So but before there. you finish this, hold yeah. on, Dale. Before you finish this, we're going to take another break. This show is okay. just flying by. <laughs> Remember, you listen, you listen to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And Dale's talking. He's going to finish the story about the Tommy Morris. We'll be right back after this break. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Oh, welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and we got Mr. Dale Weston on the line. We had a caller come in while we were on our break, and caller, is this, this is Dr. Scott Glenn, aren't you? Yes, yes, this is Dr. Glenn. How are you? How are you doing? You must want to talk to Dale. <laughs> yes, well, I'm enjoying the Dr. show Glenn. thus far. Well, Dr. Glenn, hang on. Dr. Glenn is a writer who I met, I was I had the joy of meeting this year, and he has created a world called the Heroes from Heaven. And what a script and film this guy is about to make. Oh my God. I hope it's a monster. A to see this because it's amazing. The Heroes from Heaven. It's already a, a well received book, but we're turning it into a movie and it's just my pleasure to work with him. He's an amazing guy with a fantastic head on his shoulders. He's amazing. Thanks a lot for your kind comments there, Dale. I was enjoying the All show true. so far myself. Enjoying the show yeah. so, you know, so far myself. And it's ironic, before, before I called in, I wanted to ask Dale about his situation in Rocky Five with Tommy Morrison, and you guys were right on cue. I'd like to hear the rest of that story, if possible. Okay. So... Steve Santuso gets in, he gets his jaw broken. I'm third up. Now, people are saying, maybe you shouldn't get in the ring. I said, no, I got it. So I said, Tommy, if you hit me like that, I'm going to break your leg. So I line up, he drops his shoulder, hits me with a great right hook. And then I laugh and I leave the ring. That's what I thought happened, okay? 
what actually happened was someone was taking pictures. He hit me so hard, he knocked me out of my feet. I spun around once and hit the ground. Then he helped me up, but my mind wouldn't let me see the truth. So it ends up on that movie. He, he hit eight guys in the film, real heavy punches. So a year ago, I was invited to New York. To, I was just invited to, to New York to get an award at, at Al, uh, uh, Alan Goldberg's beautiful event, uh, martial arts show. And I ran into Ray Mercer. And the importance of this is Tommy Morrison would then fight Ray Morrison. Now, Ray Morrison is a real monster. I mean, this guy is beautiful. His fighting style and technique and power were unmatched. So he fights Tommy Morrison. Now, he knocks Tommy Morrison out with a punch late in the middle rounds. But the referee doesn't stop the fight. And it ends up Mercer hits Morrison eight more times after he's out. Yeah. One for yep. every fighter in Rocky Five. And I got a chance to meet Ray and talk to him, and we laughed about it, and we got some pictures. But it's funny how the world is connected, and things that happen to you it will is. always be revealed later and event without you doing anything other than being yourself. It was an amazing time. And it's funny great movie, we were all, too. Rocky we were all was a great film. We were all laughing about when Ray says, you know, I, I looked at the, he said, I looked at the referee. I told him to stop the fight because I knew Tommy was out, even though he was walking yeah, he was around out. the ring. <laughs> yeah, he was out. He didn't know what was going on. And it was, it was, it was like uh, justice. Eight, I'm sorry for his demise later, but uh, it was like justice. Eight people hit and it was, they were laughing when they were hitting us. I thought that was kind of rude. So Tommy and Steve sued. I had pictures of me getting knocked out, I didn't, so I didn't think it was the right thing to do. I, I got paid and I did my job, but I didn't really get hurt like they did. They both, I think they got a couple hundred thousand each at the end and, and guaranteed roles in the next Avildsen film or something. But it was uh, it was kind of a sad story, but, you know, uh, certainly uh, justified by Mercer's actions at the end. So it was a great thing. Dr. Scott, are you still on? Oh, just listen to the story. That's, he must that's good stuff there. That's, a, that's outstanding stuff there. I, I also want to let people know that Dr. Dr. Scott's going to be on with me after the new year, but he, you're right, Dale. I've He sent me the, the script of uh, the little uh, write, write-up of the movie, and it's, got, it's powerful. It's a powerful movie. It is. So we're excited well, to have he, Dr. He, Scott he's, he's play on, on the radio show later. Yeah, he's a humble guy, but we had a producer call us from some mainstream films last week, and he said that, uh, hey, this is Marvel quality. I said, well, personally, I think it's better than Marvel quality. That's just me. But, yeah, it's up there. This is, this could be a $200 million film. It could be you know, a much lesser budget, but it, it, it could fight the big boys. I think it, there's an interest for that and a need for that in society now where they can go back to some of the heroes that really matter. Thanks, Doctor. Thanks, Doctor Glenn, for calling in. We'll let you go. We'll talk to you later. So, so Dale, we, we, the show is just taking off, and it's so fast. But before we let you go, I want you to let us know what's not so much what's coming on in your life, but just you. You're such a blessed man, and I know you go through tough times yourself. But how do you keep your spirits up? How do you keep your positivity going? Because that's one thing about bridges. I want to get people to get to their understanding, and from their knowledge to their understanding, and into their understanding to an action. Because only in until you get an understanding, you can only create an action. Well, I agree with you 100%. And I'll tell you, life is extremely difficult for everybody. And, and, and like that saying says, everyone you meet has a battle they're going through. And I believe that completely. The only difference between myself and a lot of people that I know who did not continue on the path was that I just, I just, dis I'm disgusted by quitters. I'm disgusted by the quitter in me. And I can't face that person or have him look at me back in the mirror. And so I continually strive to keep pushing, no matter how big the challenge, no matter how great the risk, I, I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to fail with my life. We've been given every gift in the world, mental capability, physical capability, inner strength, will, faith, belief in God. I mean, with all these things, how would you turn around and quit? And my, my greatest memory of ever, ever from film was a great film called Three O'Clock High. 
in which a school bully decides to beat up a, a young man, and the young man pays him off not to beat him. So the, the bully says to him in a beautiful scene, he says, you didn't even try. How does that feel? And I always want to be the guy who tries. I never want to feel like that loser. Before we let Dale go, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back and listen to your host, um, Dr. Paul, and the show's bridge. We'll be right back. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Remember the show has resulted to uh, the bridge is the Longfellow Bridge. And you, the human rights is the right. You have the rights no matter where you go. But I'm going to let Dale go, but I want him to say goodbye and to let him know, let people know how to get a hold of Dale. Go ahead, Dale. Very simple. Go to actiononfilmfest.com, actiononfilmfest.com. Or simply Google my name, Del Weston, D-E-L-W-E-S-T-O-N. You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, but uh, the biggest way to get me is on actiononfilmfest.com. Or you can uh, look at any of the sites I have on, on uh, Facebook, like the Del Weston Action on Film Show uh, and about eight other sites with our festivals. So that's the easiest way to get me, and I'd love to hear from everybody. Thanks, Dale, so much for calling in, and I will talk to you later, and um, say hello to Teresa for me. Absolutely. Thank you, sir, for a great show. So, Ashley, come on in, my little girl on the boots on the ground in Houston. So tell me what you think of the show. <laughs> tell me what's going on down there real quick before we have to cut out of here. Hey. I know, I know. Oh my God, this show was awesome. Like, like um, Mr. Dell said, um, I don't like quitters. I can't do quitters. I can't. You know, um, and like he said, life is hard for everybody. He's he's so he's so serious. Yeah, um, it's, there's been a lot going on. I do want to apologize to you and of course the show for not being week, but yeah, you know that's that. You know, it was a part of the the you know the unnecessary str struggle that I have to go through when it comes to black you know the being you know and health wise because they think that soul food is really soul food and but not. you <laughs> but, but but you would take care of family and that's important yes that's that's exactly I will even when family don't take care of me I'll take care of family and that's just how it's always been and um but yeah it is important you know and it's important to educate our elderly elders because they don't listen they're so called in their ways to actually eat right think a different way and you know you know it's it's a lot it's a lot that we're going through like you said life is hard for everybody so I can't even you know complain when my aunt went into like almost a diabetic coma because of what she was raised on and eating because hey it's the cheap stuff 
is the unhealthy stuff and it's not off the good stuff and the good education on what to eat right is not often in in the neighborhoods. It's not often in our community. It's not offered. So that's why we you I, know. I, 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 and, and, mm-hmm. and it's funny because if people don't know it, that there are so many unhealthy food stores in what you call low income neighborhoods. So then 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 I heard someone say, well, why can't you just go don't shop at those stores? But those other stores that have the better foods and the non processed foods, they're so far away right. from people who don't drive, who don't have access exactly. to public transportation that they can't get to oh, the right. healthy foods. So it's it's like. They're, they're also marginalized the just by don't even go where to they those live. Exactly. Public transportation yep. don't even go into the neighborhoods, to the area where the good food places are. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, so it's funny how to people change are... that, right? It's, yeah, but because it, it's, it's sad how people don't, people who are not accustomed to living in certain areas that doesn't have what you're so used to having, they're thinking, what is the big deal? But I'm telling you, people are definitely disenfranchised by the area of their populated area. It's just true. Right. Exactly. And that's why we're trying to keep the gardens that are open, you know, some of the nonprofit organizations that we work with, they grow their own vegetable and they give it out to the community. They want it. They educate the kids on how to grow it. We're trying to keep those things open, but the funding is closing everything down. It's getting bad, Dr. Paul. It's getting really bad. bad. Nobody cares about it anymore. Well, you know, it's sometimes I think, you know, we've said this before that we got to get people who doesn't affect to care more than the people it does affect. Miss Ashley, we have a little bit of seconds to left to go. Um, thank you for calling. We'll see you next week. And I just remind everybody, you have a voice out there for all of us. If it doesn't affect you, that doesn't mean it's not being effective or things aren't being effective. I want you to get out there and use your voice. This is the show of the Longfellow Bridge, and let your voice be heard, especially for the people who can't speak loud enough. All right? And I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and we'll see you next week. And This is your show, Bridges. This has been Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. Explore new ways to care for yourself and others in order to create a healthier and more vibrant community and world here on Bridges with Dr. Paul. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.